Okay, so here today we shall discuss some topics like uh, what do you mean by impulse? What do you mean by impulse? Here, what is the meaning of impulse? We shall discuss here. No. A very large force acting in a very short interval of time. is called impulse. A very large force acting in a very short interval of time is called as impulse. Now we shall discuss how does this impulse is going to act. Example, bat hitting a ball number two. Hammer Hitting nail. Okay, so if you observe these examples here, a very large force acting in a very short interval of time. If you hit a nail with the help of a hammer, how much time it will take? The, the time of contact of hammer and a nail is very less, fraction of seconds you can say. Ball is hit by a bat. How much time if the bat will be in contact with the ball? Fraction of seconds, not large time. So a very large time acting in a very short interval of time is called as impulse here. Clear? So here, according to the definition of this impulse, impulse is nothing but force into time here. Okay? It is nothing but force into time. It's not a dot product. It's called as force into time. Then here, what is the force actually? Force is nothing but m into a. So therefore, this can be written as Acceleration is V minus U by T into T. So therefore, finally, impulse is going to be I is equal to MV minus MU, which is called as delta V. So, there are two formulas, two definitions for impulse. This is the first one, and this is going to be the second one here. Okay? So, one is, impulse can be defined as a very large force acting in a very short interval of time. This is the first definition. Then what is the second definition? Impulse can also be called as rate of change of momentum. Impulse can also be called as change in momentum, not rate, sorry. Change in momentum is also called as impulse because V minus U by TT gets cancelled, so you have V minus. This is called as change in momentum, is it? Okay. There are many examples for impulse. Okay, I'll give a small example regarding impulse. A, bat, a batsman when he hits a ball, fielder will catch the ball and take the hand back. Why? The reason for that is, he is holding the ball and taking the hand back. This is to increase the time of reaction. Here, T is said to be time of reaction. If you want to decrease the force of the ball on your hands, so that your hands are not going to be hurt, hurt by the ball. Understand? There is a chance that finger can fracture also if you hold the ball like this. So immediately as soon as you hold the ball, you have to take the hands backwards. That is called as time of reaction. If you increase the time of reaction, force will reduce. I'll give a small example here. This is, you know that impulse is equal to force into time. If you want to increase the force, then decrease the time of reaction. Like lesser the time, greater will be the force. Hitting the nail with the help of a hammer is nothing but you are increasing the force and decreasing the time there. The reverse of that is also possible. If you want to uh, get your hands uh, safe with the, the force applied by the ball, then you have to hold the ball and take it backwards. So time of reaction increases means force will be less on your hands. That is called as another example for impulse. Understand? A very large force acting in a very short interval of time is also impulse. A very small force in a large time. If you increase the time of reaction, force will reduce. So if you decrease this one, then time of reaction, if you increase, force will reduce. Shock observers of your bike is the best example for that. Shock observers are there in a bike and there are some buses called as Volvo buses. 
understand oh volvo buses which are sleeper coaches bus they their shocks are so powerful that the speed breakers will not affect the passenger who is sitting in the bus in the last seat also but when you sit in ordinary bus yara bus we call it as in the back bench if you bend or sit what happens you know huh it will make you jump like anything because shock absorbers are not strong time of reaction will be less in ordinary buses so that frick what is said to be force will be larger on you you will jump and fall down sometimes you will be hit by the front bench also front seat also that's problematic here but when you see the volvo buses the shocks up are so good that your seat will swing very slowly understand nothing will be happening if you are sleeping in the even in the last seat also you are not, not at all hurt by the speed breakers that is called as a sleeper coach bus having a good shock absorbers understand even your bikes are also having beautiful shock absorbers okay only tire will be moving that's it bus will be in the stable position that is the another example even you might have seen that uh, there are some vessels or some vessels like uh, cups tea cups which are made up of uh, uh, ceramics huh there are some uh, tea cups which are made up of ceramics there are some wash basins and toilet basins which are made up of ceramics they will break there are some uh, what we call it as uh, some juice glasses which are made up of glass material they are very delicate but, but very costly so these type of instruments will come through online booking the parcels will come how they will pack that you know they will use grass or they will use thermocol or sometimes they will use even that uh, sheet in which where air is present button type sheet will be used that is to increase the time of reaction and the vessel and instruments will not get hurt with the grass dry grass or thermocol or some material like what is it to be some the material which is used in beds that type of material also used so that time of reaction will increase and force will be less so these are all examples for impulse here okay so now let us discuss the next concept here if you are observing impulse now let us take this is a wall okay if this is a wall here the wall will strike the ball will return back having mass m having mass m if if the velocity initial velocity of the ball is v and final velocity of the ball is minus v then what happens initial velocity of the ball is v final velocity is coming in the opposite direction then impulse of ball on the wall is nothing but m into v minus u is the formula here m into v is minus v and u is minus v again so therefore impulse of ball on the wall is minus 2 mv similarly impulse of wall on the ball is minus of minus 2 mv which is equal to 2 mv you can write got the point no so this is impulse of ball on the wall and the wall also applies the equal force in the opposite direction that will be positive here Yes, and impulse of ball on the wall is minus 2 mv. Impulse of wall on the ball is taken as plus 2 mv. Understand? Like this, you can write the impulse also. Okay. So you can find out the force also like this. Force is nothing but m into v minus u by t. Therefore, you can also write this as m into minus v minus v by t, which can be taken as force of ball on the wall is taken as minus 2 mv by t. and force of wall on the ball is equal to minus of force of ball on the wall these are called as action reaction forces here both are equal and opposite therefore force of wall on the ball is equal to minus of minus 2 mv by t which can be taken as plus 2 mv by t okay this is called as force of wall on the ball ball on the wall ball on the ball here also impulse this one this is the impulse plus two so this is about that next next concept which i want to explain here is for example here the ball is having mass m it strikes the wall 
and reflects back like this with sudden mass. It is making an angle theta with the normal to the wall here. Then what is the formula you have to apply here? Now let us see here. So now this is going to be the normal reaction. While going this way, you will take this force as mv cos theta. Okay. So for example, if this is u, u is e, u you can consider here. Okay, u is equal to v cos theta. And this is v here. Actually, this is u. This is v coming in the opposite direction with certain angle, not exactly along the normal what it is going to take place here, but with certain angle it is coming. Then what happens here? So this can be taken as u. u is equal to v cos theta, whereas v is equal to minus v cos theta, whereas f is equal to m into v minus u by t. So force of ball on the ball is equal to m into v means minus v cos theta and u is nothing but v cos theta by t here. Therefore, force of ball on the ball is equal to minus 2mv cos theta by t. Similarly, force of wall on the ball is going to be minus of force of ball on the wall. Therefore, force of wall on the ball is going to be plus 2mv cos theta by 2. So, these are the formulas which you have to remember here. Okay. Next one. So these are the formulas you have to remember here. Okay. So here in this case, this is a pipe, this is a water moving in this direction. The water is applying certain force on the wall and it is falling down. It is falling on the wall and it is dropping down like this. That means initial velocity is present, final velocity is going to be zero in this case. Okay. Initial velocity is present, final velocity is going to be 0 in this case. So here, let us consider the first case. Initial velocity is V, final velocity is 0. Okay, so what are we going to write now? M into V minus U by T here. So F is equal to force of liquid on the wall is M into 0 minus U is nothing but V here. So you can write V here by T. So, force of liquid on the wall is mass, okay. So, what is the mass here actually? So, what is the mass of this liquid? So, mass is nothing but volume into density. Mass is nothing but area into length into density. Here, this length is equal to velocity into, this length is equal to velocity into time, is it? This length of the liquid is taken as velocity into time here. So, I can take this as A, V, T, rho. So, this all coming under mass here now. So, instead of mass, I can write all these things here. You just remember one thing here. Capital V is called as volume and small v is called as velocity. This thing you have to remember. That's it. Remaining things are very easy to understand. Now, instead of mass, I have to write all these things. So, instead of mass, I will write A V T rho into minus V by T. Therefore, TT gets cancelled. Force of liquid on the wall is A V square rho minus. Okay. Similarly, force of wall on the liquid is equal to minus of force of liquid on the wall. Action reaction forces are equal and opposite. Force action is equal to minus of force reaction. Therefore, force on the wall with the liquid is A V square rho. This is the formula you have to remember here. For example, a body, this water is going right side with velocity v and returning back with the same velocity v, then what happens? Same velocity v in the opposite direction, let us imagine. Then what happens? So here, u is v and v is equal to minus v. Then what happens? f is equal to m into v minus u by t. f is equal to m into minus v minus v by t which is equal to minus minus 2mv by t and you know that instead of mass you'll be writing a v t rho minus into v by t t, t gets cancelled and 2 is also present here so this is force of liquid on the wall is minus 2 a v square rho by that's it no a v square rho minus will come similarly force of wall on the liquid is plus 2a v square into rho. Like this you have to get the answer here. 
is it clear then after that this is the formula you are getting so these are the formulas you are going to get here next if the liquid is moving with a velocity u understand u and final velocity which is going in the opposite direction is taken as minus v okay so here initial velocity and final velocities are not same initial velocity is u final velocity is v then what happens it's very simple so you can write the third exceptional case here m into v minus u by t here this can be written as m instead of v you can write minus v here u is u only by t so f is equal to mass can be taken as a v t rho into minus 2v divide 2 sorry not minus 2v here it is minus if you common out v plus u okay by t so t t gets cancelled f is the force of liquid on the wall is av rho av rho into v plus u by t you can write like this is it mm -hmm. t is been cancelled here so you can write like this is it this is the formula you getting hope you have understood this one okay Okay. Come on. Now, in this system, what I am going to do is I am taking one block. I am taking another block also. So this is the two blocks which are resting on the table. Okay, two blocks are resting on the table. Then here, let us consider this is of mass capital M. This is of mass small M. and he is asking us to find out find contact force he is asking us to find out the contact force here what is the meaning of contact force now when you push this block with certain force f this body larger body will apply certain force on the smaller body right side and this smaller body also equally apply certain force left side these are action reaction forces according to newton's third law and they are going to be same but opposite equal but opposite this is called as contact force sometimes this contact force is also called as normal reaction understand and both the blocks are moving right side with an acceleration find the contact force means he is asking us to find out what is the value of small f here what is the value of small f here how are you going to find out the value of small f let us take free body diagram for capital m first so if you observe capital m how many forces are acting on capital m oh, one is the force which is acting right side another is the force which is acting left side is small f and these two are going with an acceleration a resultant force also acting right side only so the resultant force is capital f minus small f and this is capital m into a is equal to capital f minus small f here okay so this is equation number 1 now let us take a free body diagram for mass small f here so how many forces are acting on this small mass small f only one force is acting that is right side because of which the block is moving right side with an acceleration small a then you will be writing here f is equal to m into small a here m into small a you are going to write so this is considered to be equation number 2 here so if you observe these two equations you just do one thing substituting 2 in 1 this if you substitute here capital m into a is equal to capital m minus small f small f means you write m into a you substitute here then you will be writing capital m plus small m if you common out a will be left this is f this implies that acceleration you will get acceleration of the system is capital f by capital m plus small m so we'll be getting acceleration here like this so once you get an acceleration it's very easy to find out contact force substituting a in 2 you can substitute in 1 also here okay ekkada here also you can substitute but better to substitute in 2 in 1 if you substitute you get the same answer doesn't matter but easier options we have to consider here this one is easier so what are we going to do substitute a in 2 here so that is f is equal to m into a a is nothing but capital f by uh, capital m 
plus small m. Therefore, finally, you can write the step like this. Contact force, contact force, small f is equal to small m into capital F by capital M plus small m. Okay. This is, okay, this is called as uh, contact force. Plus one. So then, you can just uh, find out these type of problems here. For example, now I have taken three blocks. Okay, I have taken three blocks. Okay, let us consider this is six kg, and this is two kg, and this is going to be four kg. Now, what is the contact force here? Let us consider here the contact force is F1 and F2. F1 and F1. And here's the contact forces are F2 and F2. And he's asking us to find out, find F1 and F2. Okay? So, here we can eliminate some of the steps easily. See, instead of writing all these equations, directly you can write A is equal to force by net mass force net by mass net so acceleration is force net is capital F only acting no net force and net mass is small m plus capital M this step you can write directly instead of writing all these equations what is this step where did you get this step this step no so instead of writing all these directly you can go for this step is it so net force by net mass instead of writing again and again here also you can write acceleration is equal to net force by net mass for example in this direction force applied is 20 newtons understand so what is the net force acting here for this you write an equation a is equal to net force is the force which is going to be applied net mass can be taken as m1 plus m2 plus m3 therefore acceleration can be written as 20 by 4 plus 2 plus 6 like this you can write then directly you will get mass per second square as an acceleration but our uh, aim is to find out the two forces contact forces f1 and f2 how are you going to find out these contact forces very simple 6 kg block if you consider here separately how many forces are acting on this 6 kg block only one force is acting that is f1 is equal to 6 into a f1 for example this is m1 this is M3, M2 and this is M1. It's a simple formula that force F1 is taken as M1 into A. So directly you get the answer. M1 is 6 and A is 20 by 4 plus 2 plus 6. That is 12. You can write 12 directly here. So you get the answer F1 easily. So you cannot, you did not take the free body diagram of the middle one. Directly you can take this one and find out the answer very easily. So I will take the free body diagram for 4 kg mass here. So this is a 4 kg mass. In this direction capital F is acting, in this direction F2 is acting, in this direction acceleration is acting. Therefore resultant force is also acting in this direction. So you can write uh, here, the resultant force is going to be capital F minus a small F2. So capital F resultant force FR is equal to how much are you going to write now? That is this is M3 no? So M3 means you can write M3 into A is equal to capital F minus F2. And our aim is to find out F2 here. Okay, it's very simple now. So F3 is how much? 4. Acceleration you can write here 20 by 12. Capital F also known to you that is 20 newtons minus F2. Can, can't you find out F2 now? It's very simple to find out 4 ones, 4 3 is 12. So 20 minus 20 by 3 is your answer. That is for F2. Understood? So F1 also I got, F2 also I got. In this way you have to find out the problems, find out the solution of the problems. Multiple bodies which are in contact with each other. Okay, come on. You just see this way now. There are three blocks considered here. Three blocks also hanging in this way, and a force is applied upwards because of which three blocks are moving. Understand? Three blocks are moving. Find the tensions between the blocks. Okay? You just take one small example, I'll make you understand what is this. I'll just take one small block to which tension is applied here. And what is acting downwards? 
Mg is acting downwards. Acceleration is upwards, the resultant force is upwards because the block is moving upwards. As the block is moving upwards here, the resultant force is going to become tension minus Mg. So this is Ma, tension minus Mg. Therefore, T is equal to M into G plus A. M into G plus A. So tension which is going to always act upwards is taken as M into G plus A. Now, if these three blocks are moving down with an acceleration, then tension will change. What happens to the tension? I will give a small example for that also. I have taken a block M. Tension is acting upwards. Mg is acting downwards. Acceleration is down here. Resultant force also down because you are dropping these three downwards now like this. Then what happens? Here resultant force is going to become Mg minus T here. And this is Ma which is equal to Mg minus T. Therefore T is going to become M into G minus A. So tension down is equal to M into G minus A. This you have to remember. These two formulas you have to remember. When the blocks are moving upwards, this is just like a lift case, no? When the lift is moving up, same thing here. Their normal reaction will act. Here tension will act. Understand? So tension up is this one. Tension down is this one. Okay? Like normal reaction uh, on the lift, when the lift is moving downwards, is this is the formula. But, it's very easy if you understand these two now. Can, can you find out now what are the tensions acting between the two blocks here? What is the aim of the question is? He's asking us to find out T1 and T2 here. Okay. The first thing is, here if you take T1, okay, solution for the problem. T1 if you observe. So this is mass M1 here. T1 is acting upwards. Okay. So as T1 is acting upwards, Directly you can write the formula T1 is equal to M1 into G plus A. Can you write like this? Because upwards noise is going. I am taking the first case where acceleration is going upwards. Okay, we got the tension T1 also. Similarly, if you take uh, mass M2 and tension is acting T2. And downwards, what are the things acting now? T1 is also acting downwards. M1G is also acting downwards. So these are the mutual tensions acting here. The tension acting on this block upwards is T1 and the tension acting on this block downwards is also T1 here. Okay, so as this block is pulled by this upwards, this block is also pulling that downward just like contact force. This is contact tension. That's it. So here what I have to do now? As it is going upward with an acceleration, you can write T2 minus T1 plus M1G is equal to M, uh, resultant force. What is this? So, resultant force. Upward it is going. So, dominating force minus less dominating force. You can write like this. So, the next step you can write here is FR is equal to. FR is how much here? M2 into A, which is equal to T2 minus T2 minus M1 into G, okay? So T1 here, M1 into G. Then what is T2 here now? T2 is equal to M2A plus T1 plus M1G. Therefore, T2 is equal to M2A. What is T1 now? T1 is nothing but what we have got here, M into? Mg, M1 into G plus M1 into A plus M1 into G, is it? So from this, what are you going to get now? T2 is equal to, how much you will get now? Hmm? Okay. So, can you write the final step like this? I will write see, the final step by using this shortcut. T up can be written as M1 plus M2 into G plus A. Can you write like this? Because here tension T1 how much you have to write? M1 into G plus A. This is M to G no? Okay, this is M to G. So if you simplify you will get the same thing. If you want you can just see. Is it? The same thing we will get. So, 
Why to write all these free body diagrams? If you apply this concept, it's very easy. If you want, you can find out this tension also here. Tension T3, which is going to be the same force here. You can find out. Directly you can write here. T3 will become how much? Here, this is going to be T2, no? Applying the concept of up here. So, T3 is going to be how much? M1 plus M2 plus M3 into G plus A you can write here, okay? For example, if this force, if this three are dropped down, only one thing will be changed here. Instead of G plus A, you will get G minus A in all the remaining cases. Hope you have understood this one. Yes? Okay. So if you observe this system, there are the three blocks which are resting on the table, M1, M2 and M3. Find the tension between the blocks. So he is asking us to find out this tension here. Okay. So this is the tension. Let us imagine this is T1. So this is tension T2 here. How can you find out these tensions here? It is very clear that all the three blocks are moving right side with an acceleration. Okay, so I told you a shortcut formula, acceleration is equal to force net by mass net. Here acceleration force net is capital F, mass net is M1 plus M2 plus M3. If you take a free body diagrams and again draw the diagram separately, apply the equations of free body diagram and club them, same thing you will get again. So that all these steps we are eliminating by writing a shortcut here. So acceleration is equal to force by net mass here, we got an acceleration. So how can you find out this tension first of all? Let us take tension T1. So tension T2 you are finding, no? Yes, tension T2. So this is the block here on which only one tension is acting right side, that is T2. Nothing else is acting on that, is it? Nothing else is acting on that. No, it is moving right side. So T2 is equal to M3 into the other side. So very simple here. So you all know this is going to be 40, 40 by how much? 2 plus 4 plus 8, okay, so get this one, you will find out an acceleration here and simply you will just take M3, what is M3? 8 into 40 by 2 plus 4 plus 8, you got the tension T2, yes, you will get tension T2, next. To find out tension T1, what you have to do? Just take only one block which is of mass M1. Right side force, left side tension T1, acceleration right side, resultant force right side. The resultant force is equal to F minus T1. And resultant force is how much here? M1 into A is equal to F minus T1. Okay. So he is asking us to find out T1 now. Can you write T1 as F minus M1 into A? So it's very simple to find out T1 now. F is 40 and what is M1? Given M1 2 and acceleration is how much? How much acceleration will be getting? 40 by 2 plus 4 plus 8. That's true. So you get the tensions also. Is it clear? Yes. So this is one type of model you can solve here. This is one more model of multiple pull equations, pulling with having multiple blocks here. So previously you have taken single block, now you have taken two blocks. And you know that Atwood's machine we have discussed already. So shortcut I will tell you, acceleration is equal to M2 minus M1 by M1 plus M2 into G here. So acceleration is nothing but, you can write the general formula like this for pulleys, unbalanced forces by net mass. This is the general formula. This is called as a shortcut here. What is the meaning of unbalanced forces here? Instead of writing the free body diagram, you can just write the direct step here. For example, there is a pulley having mass M1, this is mass M2, and this is a pulley. So uh, previously we used that free body diagram and uh, derive the equations, club the equations, get the acceleration now. So now you can write directly by using this unbalanced forces. So this is acceleration here. So what is the meaning of unbalanced forces? Unbalanced means this is these two are unbalanced. It is coming down, this is moving up. So unbalanced force. You also know that force is M into A, no? So unbalanced force means M2 minus M1 into A. 
Okay, or you can write one more step like this. M2 A minus M1 A divided by net mass. So this is a shortcut formula for finding the acceleration. Understood? Shortcut to find out an acceleration. So just again right now, acceleration is equal to M2 minus M1 by M1 plus M2 into G. For example, if this mass is larger, this is larger, this is lighter, then it is moving upwards. Then in this case, equations how much will become? Unbalanced over means larger minus smaller. Means M, M1 minus M2 it will become at that time. M1 minus M2 into G by M1 plus M2. Okay. So here, force means MA. A means G you can write. F is equal to mass into gravity here. So instead of writing acceleration, you can just write G. Common out that G here. You will be getting how much like this. Because these two forces are influenced by gravity only, no? That's why M2 minus M1 into G by M1 plus M2. Now, how are you going to find out the free body diagram for this M1? So these are all how, what are these? These are all basic basics of Atwoods machine. Now this is a complex Atwoods machine where there are not two masses, there are three masses here. So how are you going to find out here? You just take here M1, tension T1 is acting upwards, M1 G is acting downwards, acceleration is acting downwards, resultant force is also acting downwards. So resultant force is how much here? M1 G minus tension T1. So M1 into A is equal to M1 G minus tension T1. So T1 if you under, uh, write here, M1 into G minus A. So this is tension T1 you can find out. I will give a small example also for this. For example, this is my block of mass 2 kg. This is also block of mass 2 kg. This is also block of mass 2 kg. Then what is the answer here? It's very simple. Okay, so you have to find out the tension T1 here. Okay, so what is an acceleration? How can you find out an acceleration by using this shortcut here? It's very simple. Acceleration is equal to unbalanced forces by net mass. What are the unbalanced forces? Two forces are acting downwards. So you can write M1 plus M2 into G minus M3 into G here. This is going to be unbalanced forces now. Previously only one block was there. There are two blocks here. So M1 plus M2, both are moving in the same direction. So you have to add them. Add them and multiply with G, subtract them with M3G which is going in the opposite direction, divided by net mass. Okay, you can find out acceleration by using this shortcut formula, unbalanced forces by net mass. Okay, after that you can substitute an acceleration here, find out tension T1. Similarly, you can find out tension T2 also. Okay, now, now if you take these two masses as single mass, you just see here now. This is just like an Atwoods machine in which this is going to be 4 kg, this is going to be 2 kg here. 4 kg because 2 plus 2 is 4, here 2. So tension formula you also know here. 2 m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. This shortcut also you can apply here. Instead of uh, substituting all these values, joining them, finding the tension by substituting them, it's going to be a headache for us. So T1 you can find out by free body diagram. T2 you can find out by this shortcut here. But here, in this shortcut, M2 will be the combination of M1 plus M2, which is 4 kg, that's it. So the answer is, now you are finding T2. So T2 is going to become 2 into M1 is 2, 4. M2 is 4, 2 plus 4 like this. Understood? So this way you can find out the concept here. Okay, the answer uh, we shall discuss about friction. Okay, so uh, what is the meaning of friction here? Okay. So let me give one small example for that. I am taking one table. Okay. I am taking one table which is connected to a pulley here. So fixed rigid pulley. Fixed. And this. There is one block which is resting on a table here. And there is a string which is passing over the pulley. Okay. And. Let us imagine there is a pad which is hanging down here. I will draw one graph based on this here now and try to explain what is going to happen on this here. Okay. So this is applied force on x-axis and there is one force which is called as frictional force which is taken on y-axis here. 
you just see here what i am drawing is there is one uh, what is said to be a table this is a table on which a block is resting here and this is a pan which is going to hang now so what is the meaning of friction i'll tell you here how come this friction will come how how come the friction will act here now if you see microscopically on the table which is present here microscopically if you see there are ups and downs here the upper block is also having ups and downs which can be seen in a microscope and in the lower block lower table also there are ups and downs present here the upper blocks ups and downs exactly fixes in the ups and downs of the table here okay so which will hold the block so that's why if pan is empty there is no friction force acting backwards here when the pan is empty there is no friction force acts on the block in the backward direction understand so now as soon as you you add certain weight here friction will start acting in the backward direction still you add some more force friction starts increasing still you go on adding the mass on this pan here friction goes on increases up to certain extent once the mass has reached to the such a level in the pan that the block is now slowly starting to move right side okay but still not at move this block is not at started moving still because even a small stone of some grams if you keep this will start moving now ready to move but not moving the block is ready to move but not moving but slowly if you add a small slight weight also if you add here the block will start moving so till then whatever you are going to observe here this is called as static friction and static friction slowly increases 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 up to certain extent but once the block starts moving what happens you know the friction will decrease and becomes constant here why is it so like this okay up to this extent here it is called as static friction so this completely this area is called as static friction here and what is this going to be this is going to be limiting friction okay that means once this limit of weights added in the pan has crossed then what happens this block is ready to slide now once the once the block is ready to slide the ups and downs of this block will the will not have time to fix in the ups and downs of the lower block there is no time at all now so what happens you know little bit uh, friction will decrease here so and that friction which is decreased to from the limiting friction to little bit lo lower way that is called as kinetic friction this is called as kinetic friction whatever the straight line i am drawing this is a kinetic friction and kinetic friction is less than the limiting friction why limiting friction because when the block is at rest friction will be static friction will increase and up to certain extent it will increase once the block starts moving friction little bit decreases and becomes constant when the block is moving why is it decreasing can you tell me now i'll give one small example for that okay so while pulling this chair the starting will be little bit hard but once the table or a chair started moving that becomes easier to pull it is it why is it so why there's uh, why the horse cart is difficult to pull in the starting stage but once the cart starts moving it becomes easy for a horse to pull it that is because of static friction once the cart or a chair or a table which is heavier starting it is difficult to pull but once it starts moving it becomes easier to pull because kinetic friction is less than the limiting friction static friction is not constant static friction depends upon the applied force applied force increases static uh, static friction also increases okay i'll give one small example you are sleeping on the cement uh, cement road for example i am someone is pulling your legs and just holding the legs is not pulling you you will not feel any pain but once a person starts starts pulling you on the cement road then friction starts acting understand friction starts acting on you 
So when nobody is pulling this way, no friction is acting. Once somebody starts pulling, friction will come into action here. So this is called as kinetic friction. Hope you have understood this. Now I will tell you one small concept on this here. So now let me discuss what is going to happen here. How many forces are going to act here? For example, now let us consider this is going to be the friction force acting. And what is this going to be in the upward direction? Normal reaction is acting. Anyhow, Mg is also acting downwards. So normal reaction is acting in this direction. Now I will close these two vectors in the form of rectangle here. Then what is going to happen here? What is going to happen here? This is going to be the resultant force. This is going to be the resultant force here. What is the angle made by the resultant force with the normal? What is the angle made by the resultant force with the normal? That angle is called as angle of friction. Understand? What is this angle is called as? Here theta is called as angle of friction. Okay? And this is called as uh, resultant of normal and friction force. Okay? The resultant of these two is called as FR. Okay? Because FR is going to be the hypotenuse here. This is F and this is F. Okay? Both are equal and opposite. And what is this? N. So this is F and this is N means what is this going to be? This is going to be F square plus N square. F square plus N square. So therefore, this FR is called as contact force. This FR is called as contact force which is given by FR which is the square root of F square plus N square. And one thing I would like to tell you here. Here you should observe that normal reaction acting upwards, the weight acting downwards, both are going to be same, equal and opposite. Understand? Normal reaction and weight acting downwards, both are going to be equal and opposite here. But one thing you should remember here, friction is always directly proportional to weight of the body. I will give a small example. A large uh, for example, a boy having a weight of 100 kg, a boy having a weight of 50 kg, both are moving in a bike, but due to some accident they have fallen down on a tar road. Who is affected more? 100 kg boy is affected more because when he skids, when a lighter boy skids, he will skid like this. But when a heavier boy will skid, he will skid like this with a lot of pressure applying on the ground. Then what happens? more friction, more wounds on heavier body. So friction is more on body whose weight is more. Understand? Let us take one chalk here. This is imagined to be a blackboard. I'll just touch the chalk gently and draw a line. It will be a very gently line. Less friction is applied. I will press the chalk and draw the line. More friction will act on the chalk. Means you are falling down with a lot of weight means you will be having more friction. So friction depends upon the weight here. And if you remove this proportionality, you will get a constant that is mu mg. Okay. And mu mg is called as, what is this mu actually? Mu is called as coefficient of friction. Mu is called as coefficient of friction here. So what is mu going to be here? Mu can be taken as F by, here I told you, n is equal to mg. Can you write f as mu into n because n is equal to mg? Understand? Both are same. So you, instead of mg, you can write n also. Then from this, you can write mu is equal to f by n. I will also write tan theta here. Tan theta is opposite side which is f and n. I will take this as equation number 1. Okay? I will consider this as equation number 1. I will take this as equation number 2. Anyhow, 1 is going to be equal to 2. Therefore, I will write tan theta is equal to mu. Theta is equal to tan inverse of mu. This is called as angle of friction, we call it as. This is called as angle of friction, we call it as. Understood? So, okay.